Have you been looking for a job in cybersecurity, but you're only using search terms like SOC analyst or the word cybersecurity to try to find jobs? If so, I'm going to give you a list of 15 keywords that you can use that you probably haven't thought of to look for jobs that other people probably aren't searching for either. Just so you know what to expect, I'm going to cover the actual keywords themselves, of course. I'm going to talk about how I came up with them, and then I'm going to cover the average salary that you can expect for each individual keyword. And I can pretty much guarantee you, you at least haven't heard of a few of these. So let me know in the comment section if you've heard of all of these, I'm going to be surprised for sure. And before we get started, if you didn't already know, I have a whole bunch of free practice exam questions on my company website from CompTIA A+, Network Security+, Plus, to ITIL, and we have CISSP as well. Definitely going to be adding more in the future, so for sure, check those out. So getting right into things, this is the actual list of search terms here that I came up with. Um, I'll kind of explain these and explain like about the pay and stuff, but before all of that, I just want to say like where I got these from. Um, basically, I went through Indeed and I searched for entry like entry level cybersecurity jobs and I just grabbed the first 100 of those like 100 um, job titles and the description and I just kind of dumped them in this uh, Excel spreadsheet here. And then to pick out the titles that I thought were like kind of unique and keywords, I kind of like looked through the description and then I kind of looked through the job titles and see if I could see any trends in here and, and stuff that I, I noticed that you could search for that other people probably wouldn't think about. Um, so that's kind of where these came from. I'll put a link to this in the description if you really want to like comb through it and like, you know, find your own keywords and stuff. But basically I came up with this and I'll kind of explain what this stuff is. So basically um, all of these are kind of related to defense jobs and defense contracts. So IAT stands for Information Assurance Technical. Uh, DOD, of course, is, you know, Department of Defense. And 8140 and this 8570, these are like directives by the Department of Defense that describe certain levels of certifications that you need for certain jobs. Looking at this, um, this is IAT. Remember I told you a, a minute ago, like Information Assurance Technical. This is like level one, level two, level three. So they can say like, okay, this job requires like IAT level two certification, which means, you know, you need to get like one of these certifications in here. Um, so that's what that is. And like a lot of jobs have the word or the keyword like 8570 in them and like 8140 and then IAT and stuff like this. And people don't usually think to search for those because if you search for like, um, for example, if you search for like 8570, a bunch of uh, defense jobs should come out, but they might have like kind of obscure titles, at least some of them, but that people wouldn't have been able to anticipate. Like, like this is kind of an obscure title. Um, even help desk specialist one, it's HD one, it's kind of obscure. And the Department of Defense like tends to use, not all of them, but they tend to use like kind of weird stuff in the title, like this thing too. Um, maybe you would have been able to find this by typing like help desk specialist, but it will produce like jobs that you wouldn't have thought to search for, if that makes sense. So coming back to here, um, 80, 8140, 8570, these are like the same things. And by the way, if you want to be able to apply to these, um, usually it will require you to have a security clearance, but a lot of the entry level jobs, or I should say many of them, they'll actually give you a clearance. Like that's how I got a security clearance. I, I applied to like a lower level job and they, they sponsored me for a clearance. So it is, it is possible. Um, and once you have a clearance, it makes you like, uh, eligible to work a lot of other like kind of cool defense jobs. So just like FYI about that. Um, NIST, you can Google it. There's like a lot of uh, special publications by NIST pertaining to cybersecurity, like NIST 853, which is uh, security and privacy controls, NIST 837, which is risk management framework. So for example, if we take NIST, let me go search Indeed, no doubt, you know, a bunch of cybersecurity jobs will come out. And you, there might be kind of some obscure job titles you wouldn't have thought about before, like maybe cybersecurity risk analyst or vulnerability analyst or cybersecurity controls assessor. It's kind of like a weird title, right? And this is another another good one to search, 853. This is security and privacy controls. And if you want, you can kind of look up what the rest of the stuff is, like NOC is Network Operations Center, you know, risk analyst, risk information insurance cloud. And if we sort pay by lowest pay to highest pay or even you know highest pay to lowest pay there's kind of an interesting ish trend i noticed um oh by the way getting into pay like how i actually calculated uh what this pay was basically i would just go to um i would copy this for example this 853 and i would go to you know indeed and search it and i would 
click on pay and I basically like add all of these up all of these pay with like how many jobs it found and I just averaged them out with chat GPT I just had it do the math for me and then for example NIST 853 the average you know potential average salary for this search term ended up being like 103,000. So if you're just wondering where I got that number from, it's just I took the raw data from Indeed and averaged it out, if that makes sense. And something kind of interesting that I did notice, I guess this kind of makes sense, but on average, the higher the pay is, like the lower number of jobs there might be. And, you know, conversely, the lower the pay, the higher number of jobs there, se there seems to be. So if you're like an entry level person, like you're brand new to IT or like brand new to, or even working like help desk and you're just trying to get into cybersecurity, I might recommend, um, you, like, of course you can just use all of these search terms, right? But I might recommend like shooting for kind of like lower pay jobs because typically the expectation with like your experience and resume and stuff is lower and it'll be more easy for you to kind of get into, get your foot in the door in, in a sense, if that makes sense. So if you're someone who like just went through my cybersecurity course and you were even drilling that lab, right. And you're, you're just trying to get in, like you're just trying to get your foot in the door. I might shoot for these levels down here. And I do want to say, if you want to work any of these defense jobs, you need to at least have security plus because you need to have like um, one of those 8140 or 8570 certifications. So for example, you know, security plus gives you at least IAT level two. Basically in order to get that, I would recommend going through the Google cybersecurity program and completing it because when you do that, you get a 30% coupon for CompTIA security plus. And if you take that and get security plus, both of those certs are going to be cheaper than if you got security plus on its own without the coupon, if that makes sense. So um, I'll put a link in the description for the Google cybersecurity program, um, as well as practice questions for CompTIA security plus the really decent practice questions. They have answer explanations and, and everything. So definitely check both of those out. Um, also put a link in the description for a, like, in my opinion, a high tier cybersecurity resume template. So you can kind of use that and retrofit it to yourself. I do also teach a cybersecurity course myself. It's very hands-on. It's delivered in the cloud in Azure. We spin up a bunch of resources, including a bunch of virtual machines and databases, and we configure a SIM. We expose all of our stuff to live attack traffic on the internet, and we actually practice um, handling incidents through the sim which is microsoft sentinel so definitely check that out a lot of people have gone through it and found some pretty decent jobs with it already and it also has an internship component to it as well to kind of put that actual experience on or on your resume because a lot of people have that catch 22 like you need experience to get experience um, i'm trying to help solve that problem with the internship component so i'll put a link for that in the description as well but yeah thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video